right, it's Co-Optimist. We are here live from E3. It is day zero. That's press conference day. It's 2014. This is my eighth E3. It's Nick. I'm joined by Justin. This is your first E3. How's it feel so far? It feels amazing and tiring at the same time, definitely. Yeah, I think Locke said it best earlier today when he said, who knew sitting in a bunch of press conferences could be so tiring? Uh, and it really was. But our day started bright and early. Uh, we were waiting in line at, what was it, 7 o'clock this morning, 7.30, and uh, going into Microsoft. And uh, I know you were a little bit of a skeptic, right? They, yes. they, they had a lot of work to do to, to impress you, but uh, I, think, I think you came away impressed, right? I did. I did. It was the first. So most Microsoft conferences that I've seen, I've always left sort of, eh, you know, some stuff was cool. But this one definitely blew my mind. It was just like a solid 90 minutes of exciting stuff. And it was all it was all game trailers. It felt almost too much, but you know, I would rather have that than what they've done in the previous years. Yeah, so that we've been promised games, games, games. That that was uh, drilled into our heads over and over again, and they delivered 90 minutes straight of games, games, games. Uh, lots of co-op stuff. That's big news for us. I know it's been kind of kind of a drought for the past maybe year, year and a half, as this transition's taken place between the. Uh, old generation the new generation but uh first thing that we saw that really blew us away i know i know me personally too was assassin's creed unity uh, it's been rumored for a while assassin's creed games with having co-op a co-op campaign for a very long time now it finally is uh it's going to be integrated into the main game you're going to be able to bring in friends uh build your own brotherhood and what they showed it was you know five minutes of pure gameplay really really co-op uh, I'm excited for it. I know you said you're not a huge Assassin's Creed fan, but look cool. Yeah. It it definitely did look cool. It it seems it's definitely one of those games that I would play if I had a dedicated group of people that like we're gonna do the co-op and we're gonna do it right. But it, it going in just with random seems like it might be too sloppy for especially for a game like Assassin's Creed. Yeah, yeah, I know that that was a complaint we've had with uh, the Wolfpack mode. Uh, in the previous games, that it, it can be uh, a little cumbersome with random folks. Uh, but yeah, so then after that, we had what was probably the craziest trailer that came out of nowhere, and I'm not even going to attempt to do the full title, but it's a Dead Rising 3 DLC expansion. It's Super Mega Ultra Hyper Extreme Alpha Edition something or other. You nailed it. Yeah, I did? Okay. <laughs> so it looked like Power Stone to me at first, but I guess what it is, it's an arcade mode like I said, DLC, four-player co-op. You can play as any of the Dead Rising characters from the previous games as well as other Capcom games. They showed some Street Fighter characters playing in it and stuff, and it just looked really crazy. Uh, and the big surprise, too, with that, not only was a trailer out of left field, it's out now. It's, it's available now. So I know I played Dead Rising 3, and that makes me want to play more of it and, and just see what that's all about. So that, w- that, was, that was cool. It was, it was definitely cool. It got a lot of laughs on the floor, too. And uh, it was great that they kind of just knew, like Capcom was like, hey guys, we know what we do with our titles sometimes, so let's just go all out with this one. Yeah, it's good when a company re- doesn't take itself too seriously. They realize, yeah, we, we can be a little a little ridiculous. So, uh, And speaking of ridiculous, the next game is way over the top. It's Insomniac Games' first exclusive Xbox One title, that's Sunset Overdrive. And it looks like Jet Set Radio meets Crackdown. It's just all about fun. It's you know free roaming, all vertical gameplay. You're jumping and sliding and grinding, shooting stuff. There's uh, like it, it's it's very cartoony, and it, it takes like a lot of cues from like like when you would kill uh, guys, there would be like little verbs or adjectives describing what just happened, popping up in words written in like orange blood. Because I guess everybody is. The, the way the the mutants get generated is they drink too much uh, too many energy drinks. So <laughs> you've been drinking a lot of these blue energy drinks, Justin, to, to stay been. awake here at E3. Or, or should we be worried? Feeling kind of <laughs> iffy right now, yeah. guys. Uh, so that that game was looking really cool. I mean, graphically and stuff. It, it started out in a really neat way because it looked like it was kind of like this pre-rendered intro. All of a sudden, the main character kind of like punched the the screen, and it was right into the gameplay. It was it was completely seamless. Yeah. So he like punched the HUD into the game. It he, showed up. Yeah, which was pretty cool. And then the the whole game was just colorful. It's just so colorful, and it does look like what you said, just pure 
fun. Just like yeah, like they just they, they they didn't care. It's just like if you want to you know you want to do this, do it. Whatever. You grind up, walk up a building, jump you know jump and run in between grind in between rails and it, ride a roller coaster. Ride basically. It, yeah, and, and just shoot zombies yeah. all the time or mutants, mutants whatever they're yeah. gonna be called. Uh, the big news was they confirmed an eight player co op mode for it. Uh, you know, you, you're going to be able to customize your character and design it and take it online and play with friends. So that's going to be really so, cool. Yeah, so we only saw the, the one-player uh, mode, but I'm just imagining eight players right now, how chaotic that would be. And in a good way, though, because one player, everything was blowing up everywhere, yeah. right? So if you have eight people doing that, like, holy. Yeah. So much stuff has got to be going on. Yeah. It's got to be crazy. Yeah, and so one of the messages, too, that brings up a good point that we kept hearing with a lot of the titles they brought up was everything was going to have dedicated servers. That was one that they touted that, you know, uh, Xbox One, Cloud, blah, 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 but it's going to have dedicated servers for multiplayer. Uh, so that's a good that's a good thing for sure, and, and it'll be interesting to see what that does. Uh, and then a similar game that was announced at the end, which we know is going to have co-op, and my, my personal uh, favorite that I'm really looking forward to is a new Crackdown and I guess actually what it is, it's going to be a reboot of, of the first Crackdown game. It's not going to try and you know change. It's not that the Crackdown had a great story or anything anyway, but you're going to be back in Pacific City, and it's going to follow that whole uh, thing. But they did confirm two-player co-op campaign. There'll be additional multiplayer modes and stuff like that. Uh, and the trailer was pretty crazy for that. Yeah, it was, and it was all, it was all a CG trailer, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And if so, I never played the Crackdown games, but if the co-op is sort of what they showed in the trailer, where basically you have one guy driving a truck just pumped of explosives, and another guy super far away, like at the ready with a sniper rifle, and they basically take out a building to use it to attack another building that a guy is in. <laughs> If you can like do that in the game, then yes. Yeah, I, I, money, I think definitely. I think the thing that's gonna set this crackdown apart from the previous ones is destructible buildings. So, the first crackdown, what was really cool about it was you used to be able to take a whole bunch of vehicles, you can literally piles of vehicles, and then you just blow them up. It was it was this awesome explosive physics and stuff, and for its time, it was it was really neat and it set itself apart. So, yeah, if you can blow buildings up and like knock down other buildings and stuff. Uh, it's going to be a pretty incredible experience, I think. Something, it's just it, it, kind of like Sunset Overdrive, just good fun. And when you play that with a friend, it's a lot of laughs a lot of times. So, uh, what else did we see? We saw some single player stuff and, and some stuff that, you know, we thought would have co op or the co op hasn't been revealed mm -hmm. yet. Obviously, a new Call of Duty game, yeah. uh, Advanced Warfighter. We saw some gameplay of that. Has co op, but we don't know details on it yet. Right, yeah. Um, it looks like Call of Duty. I mean, it looks pretty decent in terms, you know, graphically and stuff like that. Uh, it looks good. That game hates arms so far. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> Two arms, very damaged in that game. Yeah. Uh, we saw a new Tomb Raider, uh, which was teased, right? I think that was at the Microsoft press briefing. Yeah. 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 They teased a new Tomb Raider that was coming out in 2015. Uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, they had a new trailer for that, which was really, really pretty. Had some awesome music, some really nice visuals. I think the one thing I, I, I like that I've been seeing with uh, Dragon Age Inquisition is a good variety of environments uh, to play in. They showed some desert, some jungle, some, you know, yeah. some like uh, medieval settings and towns. And it just. Each Dragon Age game kind of stuck with a motif. You never really kind of got out of that. With this one, uh, really seems yeah, to... Yeah, especially two. Yeah. Um, but with this one, even on just social media, they've been teasing like concept art for new locations and stuff like that that look just wildly different from the previous. Yeah. So definitely like fresh places that you're going to go all throughout the campaign, yeah. it seems like. So then after the big games, they did tout uh, the indie stuff a little bit. Uh they did announce uh, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time is going to be coming to Xbox One. That was a game that we nominated last year for a game of show at E3. At that time, it was a PC-only uh, couch co-op game, but it is coming to Xbox One uh, at some point this year. So that's good news for sure. Uh, a bunch of other uh, indie titles were shown. New game from the folks who made Limbo. Right. right? Yeah, that, that looked pretty interesting. I got Inside. this. Inside. It's yeah. called Inside. Um, yeah. And it basically looks like, like limbo with color, but like a lot more depth to it. Yeah, the and the, the art style I got. If, if if you ever played Odd World or not Odd World, I'm sorry, um, Out of This World. Never. Uh, it's it's an old side scrolling. It was a PC game. I, I think it was on like Amiga even. Um, 
but it just has this it, it had a very similar style of flat kind of shading and colors and stuff like that and even like the character design is kind of blanky looking it's, it's hard to really describe but it, yeah it, you look at it and you, you can you instantly know what it is so uh yeah that looked pretty cool um, um we did get a look at fable legends right. which has so it has four player co-op definitely and then one player can jump in and play as the villain um so kind of like evolve uh, but you, you we're thinking you don't necessarily need someone to play as the villain. And how just that whole setup was when they showed people playing as a villain, it seems like something you could do on Smart Glass. Though they didn't say that straightforward, but, it, you know, we're thinking that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but Co-op to Fable Legends yeah. seems pretty... I mean, what do you think? I've never played a Fable game. Yeah, I, I mean, it doesn't seem like... So, like, Fable is all about the story and stuff like that. It seems like what that focus is, is it going to be on smaller little stories and adventures and stuff that players can uh, cr create or, you know, I guess download or, or and stuff like that. Um, it seems to be uh, a little more user-driven. Uh, graphically, it looked pretty pretty, pretty impressive and stuff like that. So, I think that's probably about it for, for the conference. I don't think there's any other big things. Uh, well, no, I guess the one really huge thing was uh, the Halo collection that was announced, yeah. the Halo Master Chief Edition, uh, which just has a obscene amount of content. You have Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4, every game that the Master Chief was featured in, over 100 multiplayer maps. The multiplayer is going to be based on Halo 2's multiplayer. The, you know, They said it's going to be straight mode. Uh, it sounds like... Uh, Halo 1 is going to be the remastered, and Halo 2 will be remastered in terms of the graphics since those two have been done. It doesn't sound like they're going to do anything for 3 and 4. Uh, one of the neatest things that they announced was you can take missions from the different Halo games and mix them into playlists that you can play through uh, kind of like a, as a mini campaign. Uh, so that's, that's a pretty unique little thing, something that nobody's really tried before, so... Yeah, I see that being pretty cool because everyone has those favorite levels in like their shooters yeah, where it's like, yeah. oh, you got to see this. It's the epic level. And being able to take like three of those together from different games and put them in one place yeah. is awesome. It's just like your adrenaline rush level, essentially. Yeah, exactly. So uh, all the Halo games have always been co-op. Uh, early on, two-player co-op. Later on, we've had four. So, uh, you know, we'll have to see see what they do there. But that's going to – that's an insane value. It's going to come with the uh, – the digital show when, when, when that's released, um, I can't the name escapes me right now. But uh, there is a Halo TV series the essentially, yeah, yeah. The, that's coming, and that you'll get that subscription essentially with uh, that Halo collection. And then for the achievement hunters, it comes with what did they say, four thousand achievement uh, gamer score points. Yeah, yeah. So pr pretty serious stuff there. So that was. Uh, it's an impressive value, especially if it comes out at sixty dollars. I forgot. I wanted to. I did want to check what if Amazon had a listing for that oh, yet. Uh, no, I have to check for to, to, to confirm. But uh, yeah, we'll have to check that out. Uh, but yeah, I think I think that's about it for Microsoft. Like I said, it was it was ninety minutes nonstop. It it was a hectic pace um, for them. So after that, it was across the street essentially to EA and to the wedding. The, the, to the wedding. wedding. Yeah. Yes, it, we it, did see a wedding. <laughs> it was a bit of an odd <laughs> setup, you know. I've been to a couple dozen press conferences here, and I've never been to one that was set up like a wedding reception. Basically, EA had tables, just rows and rows of tables, and a stage up at one end. Not even rows. Of yeah. Tables, really. Just, just all over tables, yeah. which was great for press, like the laptops and stuff. But then they had standing room only because the tables were taking up so much room. But yeah. Luckily, the press conference wasn't too involved, I suppose. Yeah, there yeah. There were some refreshments. It was a little more casual. Yeah, it was It was a lot more casual. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, the downside for EA was they couldn't have as many people there. Um, but typical EA press conference, a lot of sports stuff, some really weird things. You know, we, we did see NHL looked really impressive. Madden, you know, they showed off the new technology there. Again, looks impressive. FIFA. You know they're they're doing their normal we make strides every year kind of a thing. Uh, they announced a new PGA game that it drops it's dropped the Tiger Woods name, and oddly they're adding in like real time destruction and like you know the course is like the one thing they showed had like a battleship crashing into the course and like the guy hitting over the battleship and yeah. flames and explosions and I, I feel like that's not going to be the the main focus of the game and it's maybe like a bonus level or something like that. But they're, 
I don't know. They just they don't they can't like alienate the their audience that plays those games already. They're like, I don't want a battleship in my golf game. I want to play golf. Yeah. Yeah, so they they're building it on the Frostbite 3 engine, which which is cool. I mean, it, it looks great, but to throw that kind of stuff in there, it just seemed kind of kind of hokey. Uh, and then they showed off a bunch of stuff that was really early. Uh, I mean, we were literally seeing like concept. There was lots of labels that came up: concept footage, concept footage, Concepts, prototypes. Yeah, prototypes. Criterion unveiled uh, a racing game where you had like jet skis and hang gliders and wingsuits and helicopters and ATVs and stuff, and they were all somehow racing together and stuff like that. Um, and that again, we didn't really see any of the game itself. It was all concept, concept, concept. Um, we saw. And it's all a first-person game too. Yeah, what they right. That was the big focus. It yeah. was just first person. We saw a new Mass Effect. Again, sort really, of. really, really early. They said, you know, it's going to be a new universe, the biggest universe yeah. they've done. It's a new story. It takes place after the past Mass Effects. But again, concepts and concept art and stuff like that. And they talked about an entire new game. Yeah. That it had no name. It just had, you know, a couple concept art. They had a couple of real time renderings. Like. Yeah. And it was only locations. Yeah. It wasn't any like people or we didn't see like an animal or anything like no, that. So yeah. So you had no idea. You really have it. no clue. It's got to be something in the future and something kind of related to space. Like, it, on, I thought it was still Mass Effect concept art right, when they were talking yeah. about it. And then I'm like, oh, that was the new game. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And then from there, it jumped to uh, Mirror's Edge 2, which, you know, yeah. everyone's been wanting. They, they teased it last year. This year, they finally unveiled some gameplay. Well, not, it, not again, even. it was it, prototype. Yeah, prototype. Or, yeah. So, so they, yeah, it was, yeah, they showed prototype. They showed similar stuff from last year, but then they showed more about, like, faith the character is what they really talked about yeah. and still only briefly they said like she has a backstory and you'll hear about it later i guess but it, i guess it was just i'd rather have them do that than try to like force something out and say it's going to be ready and then delay it you know yeah for a game like mirror's edge the following is very very dedicated yeah definitely and then uh we had a very uncomfortable presentation for the sims 4 a you know, I know we're not exactly the audience yeah. for it, but there were some really bad jokes. Some of the features that they showed off, it just was not interesting at all. And the the awkward silence when the joke went from, you know, your sim literally laughed himself to death. It was just, it was palatable. It really yeah. was. And it was. Gladys came in and just ruined the party, right? Yeah. Gladys? Yeah, and there was a Dancing Obama at one point. And well, that sold me on the game. Pre-order yeah. <laughs> Dancing Obama. I Yeah, so we're not, like you said, we're not the audience, but like I saw on Twitter, I was I was on there, and people who play those games were genuinely excited about Sims 4, so they seemed to be doing something right. But the that seemed like it was a big chunk of time in the middle of the conference because they had yeah. like a live, well, not a live demo, but a live like dialogue, and then also a trailer right after it. Yeah. Um, and it did seemed very awkward yeah the big focus of it was your sims have feelings and they retain those feelings and that influences how they how their actions are and stuff like that and then yeah. they showed uh for social social stuff that you can actually go online and download like your friend sims that they've had in their game to change the dynamic of your game so i mean it, it's got some cool stuff but it was just it, it was a it was lame <laughs> it's the best way to put it um but Good news. They did open with. We skipped this. Uh, they opened with Star Wars Battlefront, right? Which arguably one of the most like anticipated games of E3. Yeah. And they didn't really open with any sort of gameplay or anything, but they talked about how they're traveling to like each of the set locations, and modeling maps and stuff after those actual locations, which is pretty cool. And then they did show some like in image or in engine rendering of those locations, yeah. which looked so great, so phenomenal. Um, but that was really it. And it was just like, hey, it's coming. Hold your horses. Yeah, yeah. So another game looks like it's a while away. You know, there was a lot of titles that were delayed from late 2014 to 2015. These titles are slated for 2015. I have a feeling some of these, it's going to be 2016 till we actually uh, get our hands on them. Uh, and then the EA conference ended with Battlefield Hardline, which mm -hmm. you know it's it's been le it was leaked like two weeks ago at this point. And then uh, there was another trailer that was just released a couple days ago too, or something. Yeah, uh, and, and it's it's cops and robbers Battlefield Force essentially. Um, I mean, it looks pretty cool. The concepts neat. It's pretty chaotic. And uh, I had heard they, they were doing a live stream uh, immediately afterwards. And I had heard some uh, negative feedback that it just it looked kind of. Kind of shoddy, and I, I can see it's it's something it, 
the, the way they laid it out where there's continuing like objectives and, and stuff like that like you really need coordinated teamwork constantly and with 32 players through all of that and to make sure everybody's doing their jobs like i can just see it fall, falling apart rather quickly but i you know well, i guess we'll see it's an open beta or not i guess it's a, we'll call it an open beta right now uh for playstation 4 users and i guess pc is coming soon for that and eventually PC now oh pc now I got too into the pc okay okay and then xbox one and 360 are coming later okay they said um, and then we, after the show, like they, end, there was like 64 or whatever PlayStations yeah. and they showed it. And so we got right up and got to see it and it looks gorgeous. It definitely looks cool. The physics look great, but like you said, it's so much going on. Yeah. And if you, if you've never played battlefield multiplayer before co- going into this, you might like just not know what to do at all, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. So that, that was pretty much EA's press conference. It, it was a little light. Like I said, a lot of stuff that's, that's uh, a ways off. That was that was the the theme, I think. Yeah. Um, and then we jumped. Well, we we took a little break. Ubisoft had their press conference. We only got to see uh, a little dancing action. A little dancing action. So, but uh, we heard that uh, a new uh, Rainbow Six game was announced. The it, former Patriots game, now Rainbow Six Siege, yeah. which apparently they started reworking on about like a year and a half ago. They just like went back to the drawing board. Um, which I guess is cool, depending. For yeah. me, I was really looking forward to Patriots. Yeah. But I know you're like, oh, Siege looks great. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, any any, any Rainbow Six is, is good in my book. But uh, yeah, we were, we were kind of pining for the days of the, the original Rainbow Six where it was a little more strategy oriented and a little less arcadey. Uh, and then, of course, they showed off the division and, and mm-hmm. some of the co op that that's going to have. And, and, you know, we're still trying to get a handle on exactly how that game's going to play out, which. Hopefully the show, that's what we'll finally do. I know I know we have a couple chances to see that. Uh, we're actually going into a little bit of an exclusive event. Exclusive. And uh, so we'll check that out. Uh, what else did they show? They showed off more Assassin's Creed Unity. Everyone pretty much uniformly said it looks amazing. It's definitely the first next-gen, purely next-gen Assassin's Creed. Um, yeah. And then they opened with Far Cry 4, right. which was a different Far Cry 4 than what we saw at PlayStation later. Right, yeah. Um, but it still looked pretty cool. I think it was like the first five minutes or whatever, and it was your intro to the villain, essentially, uh, who's crazy. But, you know, that's Far Cry. Yeah. Um, and then they showed their dance game. Just Dance Now. Just Dance Now, which Locke danced to. Um, check out our vines <laughs> on that. <laughs> was some dance in action. Uh, but yeah, so while that was going on, then we headed over to Sony for the final press conference of the day, and uh, the longest one. It ran just about two hours. Almost. There was, uh, you know, there was a lot of content again, and uh, a few co-op surprises. Uh, we hadn't heard anything on Little Big Planet three, but that was unveiled, and we yeah. saw f- it's a lot more co-op. There's actually four. We'll call them character classes yeah. that the game has. Uh, it had, you know, you had your traditional sack boy, which was kind of your balance guy, but you had this heavy uh, sack friend, and he was he was big, and and he could also shrink down. And so when he was big, he weighted things down, and small he could get into smaller places. There was like a f- uh, a four legged one that was able to like, like, like dog, wall, yeah, like wall jump and stuff, and then a bird that was able to fly and carry people up to different areas and stuff. So all the environmental puzzles and stuff like that revolved around combining their mechanics to you know traverse the level and stuff. Uh, so that was pretty cool, and then the big news was all the original Little Big Planet uh, one and two content that's out there uh, is going to work with Little Big Planet three with upgraded graphics and all that stuff. Uh, so you're not going to lose anything, and you know Little Big Planet was one of those ones where people really find a way to go uh, outside the box and create. You know, like they created like shoot 'em ups and, and all these little weird games, puzzle games, and stuff like that within the engine. So all that stuff's going to work in Little Big Planet three, which is which is really cool. So. Uh, definitely good news there for family-friendly co-op gamers. Uh, and then on the not-so-family-friendly end is Far Cry 4, which you, which you just mentioned. Uh, they announced that the game is going to have a, a two-player co-op mode this time. Basically, when you're doing the assault on the uh, the bases, the fortresses, uh, you can invite a friend in and they'll help you. And they showed uh, a guy came in with a little like little helicopter. And the guy got on and got the guy Gatling gun and they kind of went in there. And then the big news, elephants. 
Elephants. That's are... the big news. Oh, uh, <laughs> big news. Weaponized oh, pachyderms. Yeah, yeah, weaponized pachyderms. Yeah. You know, the, the, so the elephants were kind of helping them tear up the base and stuff. But uh, I guess actually the really the big news or the interesting thing is. Uh, that they said your friends don't actually have to have Far Cry 4 to join in. Everyone's like, well, how's that going to work? And I guess it seems like uh, if you buy Far Cry 4, they're going to give you codes for something so they'll be able to play just those parts with you. Again, it's unclear. Yeah. Even now, we'll have to get some details on that. Yeah, I'm thinking it's probably a tease. It's maybe a time trial or it's only like, you know, a yeah. certain sections on the map and it's just to give your friends a taste yeah. to convince them to buy the game. Yeah. Which is cool. That's great. Yeah. Um, it's something different, you know, that we haven't really seen. Uh, but it's definitely not going to be they can play the whole game with you or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, and then another big co-op announcement, uh, you know, game that we've loved on the site for a couple years now is Dead Island's getting a true sequel. Uh, we know it had Dead Island Riptide was kind of like a sequel, uh, but Dead Island 2. Uh, and it looks, the trailer was, it was so whacked out. Uh but it was great. It, it, it definitely kept the style, and it, it's it's complete flip flop from uh, when Dead Island was revealed, where it was very emotional, yeah. and uh, you know you, it, that was the one where the girl was had jumped out the window from being killed by the zombie, and it played backwards. And this one it had some hunk guy on Venice Beach essentially going out for his run, and as he's running, like the chaos is unfolding behind him as the zombies are attacking and i won't give too much away because it's definitely worth it's definitely worth watching but the music and the setting and stuff definitely gives a, a unique vibe uh to that island that they're maybe going for a little bit more over the top a little bit more comedic uh thing so we just got the info on that eight player co-op which uh which is brand new and we'll hopefully be seeing or maybe even getting some hands on time with that unreal engine 4 powered as well so big big news there i think uh, for fans, if they're not sick of zombie games yet, we'll see. I, you know, if they try something new, maybe. Yeah, I'm know. sick of zombie games, though. Yeah. So. yeah. Did, you, did you play the Dead Island games? I played the first one yeah. for like six hours, maybe, and it was just, you know, I was, yeah, it's a zombie game. Yeah. So, yeah. just another zombie game to me. So, I think that might have been about it in terms of co op stuff. There was a lot of trailers we saw, though. Some gameplay. We saw Batman. We saw. Uh, what's blood? Bloodborne. Bloodborne, yeah. which uh, some people got excited about. It, known as um, Project Beast previously, right? So that, that was, was Project code. Beast. Okay. Pretty much yeah. game of the year. So, Lock says game of the year. Um, no Man's Sky. Yeah. No Man's Sky has co-op, but we don't really know a lot yeah, about it. We don't know it. the details. It's so No Man's Sky is from Hello Games. It's a, it's brand new procedurally generated everything they, they, they said everybody that plays the game they're going to start out in their old their own procedurally generated world all the creatures on it the the style and everything else and you, you basically have a spaceship you can get in and you, you can go up into space you go to another planet who's an, from another player and you i don't know what you do in the game yet it's, it's mostly a, like an exploration game okay um and you can when you like you get to a planet uh, you, and if you're the first one there, like it says that you found it. So so you get to a planet, and then I'm playing later, and I get to the same planet. I see that you found the planet, and like you claimed it as your own. Gotcha. Um, and it's that's I don't know if that's the main part of it, but it seems to be a huge part of it. And then you can find out like the species that live on the planet and right. stuff like that. So and it's an infinite universe. They said because so you're not going to reach the end of like the planets, which boggles my mind. Um, but it definitely looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. Especially something to go and explore with a friend. Yeah. It was interesting. The, the pacing of the Sony thing was a little off because I thought that was – it almost felt like that's where they were ending their conference. Mm -hmm. But then they came back and they started talking about some numbers and stuff like that. Uh, but other trailers they showed, uh, Mortal Kombat X, uh, they, they showed the that's first great. gameplay trailer of that, that. Yeah, that was pretty brutal. Uh, a new Suda51 game. Uh, again, pretty brutal. There, there's some really brutal stuff that they showed. Uh, Let them die. Is that the Suda Fifty One game? I think Something that was like the name. That. Yeah. Uh, there was another indie game that actually got released today. Um, it was Twisted. Entwined. Entwined. Yeah. That I, I, game I, looks gorgeous. Yeah. At first, I thought it was co-op, but it looks like it's one person controlling two like beings, I guess, yeah. with the analog sticks. Beings in love. But yeah, and they're in love, and you need to join them together to form a dragon. 
but it's beautiful. Oh my god, it was just beautiful. So many yeah. colors and and that it's looks like fun. Like a Galaga perspective. Yeah, 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 yeah. Galaga Tempest, Galaga Tempest. Tempest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that that they showed that. There were uh, some small co-op announcements too that we got, just like you know briefly mentioned. So like like Minecraft is coming to Vita, right. yeah. um, and it has co-op, and they said it's like the full console experience. And then Broforce is coming to Vita and PS4. Yep. Um, and I feel I like there's one in game they they mentioned that, that would have four player split screen, and I can't think of it right now. Magic. No, Magic was Magica not the split two. screen, but Magica yeah. is coming with co-op obviously yeah yeah that's coming to pc and playstation 4 but uh i, I was a huge fan of the original magica there were the, the multiplayer and the co-op and that was just retardedly fun um the stuff that would happen you, you know you kill your buddies a hundred times but there's no death penalty essentially uh so that was a lot of fun so it's good to see and i had a great trailer definitely check out the trailer for magica 2 online uh, it was pretty funny it was hilarious yeah, yeah. Definitely. uh and then we got some numbers thrown at us. Yeah, some, some. Uh, the, no, the numbers weren't so bad as as what followed the numbers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there was a there's a new show, powers. and powers, and uh, they really wanted to tout it up as something cool. I, I honestly, I'd, I've never followed the graphic novel, so I, I, I'm sure there's a big following out there, and I don't want to offend anybody. I mean, it's the concept sounds cool. It's basically a detective agency that investigates the murder of superheroes and villains and stuff. Uh, but they brought out the original, one of the original creators of that to talk about the TV show that they're working on. And they spent a lot of time on it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was a good 10 minute chunk of time. And it was, they, so they said, and this is where sort of Microsoft and Sony switched a little bit. Whereas previously Microsoft talks about TV and like their partnerships and stuff like this and their exclusive content. <laughs> They didn't say exclusive once. They said premiere content once with Dragon Age. But Sony said exclusive, like, I don't know, six, seven times yeah. at least talking about this stuff. And it came to a point where we are just like, all right, guys, come on, next next thing, games, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it, it just, it went on and on. But they did get back to the games, and they did come back with, some, like, some of the big ones. Uh Overall, I mean, it was solid. They, they were. We saw a lot of games today. A lot of first-time yeah. things. There's a lot of, a lot of indie stuff coming out to the consoles. Uh, you know, a few announcements, a few surprises. And and so Sony, we got to talk about what they closed with. Um, they closed with Uncharted Four: A Thief's End, and it was just like a. We think it's an in-game trailer or an in-game engine, at right. least. You know, not CG. Um, and then no, you know, no details or whatever, except it's coming 2015. But it's safe to say that it will probably have co-op as two and three did. I hope so. Um, yeah. So you know, not confirmed or anything, but hopefully they don't take away a feature when they come into the next right. gen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they did. You know, we skipped over a couple other things. There was there's a lot like Last of Us. They showed that. Um, they did the remastered. Last of Us, yeah, and then the, the PS4 version coming to Diablo. Three as well. Right, yeah, Diablo Three is going to get the Last of Us content, uh, an exclusive. I guess it's going to be an adventure mode. There's going to be maybe a Last of Us mission that you can and you fight take like on. clickers and stuff, yep. and they have attacks. I guess. Yeah. So, like I said, lots and lots of games. Uh, good. We need it. <laughs> it's it's been it's been a pretty big drought, especially for for the new consoles. Uh, I don't know what what was your what was your biggest surprise maybe or what was the thing that impressed you the most that you saw today out of all the the conferences biggest surprise impressed me. this is going to be weird coming from me uh someone who has never owned an xbox uh mild interest in xbox um played maybe 10 minutes of halo ever in my life but the the master chief collection made me want an xbox yeah. one because i've read that the stories in halo are just re like really good Yep. And I've wanted to sort of play them from the beginning. I'm a start from the beginning kind of a person. And t playing like a dated game didn't really strike my fancy. But being able to just buy them all on one disc and play them all through, that's really enticing. Yeah, and that's that's their marketing angle, actually, is they keep saying introducing a new generation to Halo. Uh, you know, it makes me feel kind of old, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's 10-year-old Yeah, right? It's... Yeah. But it's good, yeah, and it is. It's a great way to play through all that stuff and get the story. And 
uh, stick with that core story there because there's been spinoff games with Reach and ODST and stuff like that. But, you know, the Master Chief and his story with Cortana has really been the been the focus so for me my the biggest surprise was, was assassin's creed unity uh, what they showed the gameplay it just it was really really tight like if i wanted to play a co-op assassin's creed like that was it like they, they nailed exactly what they needed to do with that with with the timings of taking down guards and, and the stealth and, and stuff like that so I, I was really impressed with that um I think that was my most impressive. What about and Locke's behind the camera there, but Locke, what, what was your most uh, impressive thing or uh, biggest surprise? Yeah, probably Unity as well. Unity. I was pretty jacked up about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. As long as you can coordinate with people. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like Justin said when we talked about that. You, you're definitely going to need a good crew to crew to run with. You probably won't do so well at randoms, but if you do, it, it's it's going to be satisfying. So. That's E3 Day Zero. We've got a full schedule for the rest of the week, so we'll be bringing you content all week, interviews with the devs and you know, footage and gameplay impressions and tons more. I think we're going to get some rest, though, now. We're tired. Probably. Probably time for naps. Yeah. All right, I'm Nick. This is Justin. Locks behind the camera. We'll see you soon for more E3 2014 Co-Optimus goodies.